The Bayer Healthcare companies announced that they're going to stop selling their controversial birth control called Esure. The company says it's because it wasn't selling well, which is likely because it was destroying the lives of women all over the country. That's really why they're doing this. Uh, this is, this is a, a simple story to understand. Okay, this company, Bayer has made this product. They know it's a birth control. It's totally an unnecessary birth control. There are more birth controls out there that whatever the problem is that a woman is having with a particular kind of birth control, there are other alternatives out there for them. Esure was one of these look-alike kind of deals. Other people are doing something similar. We want to try this ourselves. Now what they're finding is the Esure that is embedded in the body is breaking off in the body, migrating throughout the body and causing real serious injuries to people. That's why they're pulling the product from the market. I, as you know, I handled the, um, uh, years ago, handled uh, a case against Bayer for another birth control pill. And, uh, and, and you know, it, the problem with, with it sometimes is they're always looking for that cash cow. They're always looking, this is called Yaz. It was a, a pill yeah. called Yaz. This is not a pill. This is a, 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 it's implanted in the body, this Esure. But they're always looking to get on the very edge of the new cash cow. That's what happened here, isn't it, Farron? It, it absolutely is. And, and now they're saying, well, this cash cow stopped giving us milk. It has nothing to do with the 16,000 lawsuits we're facing over this product in the U.S. alone. No, no, no. It's because it wasn't selling well. And there's a reason. It's because, as you just point out, it's destroying the lives of women. Like so many other products that we see, and Esure is a permanent form of birth control. It's this implantable device and just like every other implantable, uh, uh, small metallic device we see in bodies, it breaks apart. IVC filter. IVC is filter is a thing. great it's example. Same, same kind of deal. Breaks apart, moves to system, moves systemically through the body, lodges in organ systems, including the brain. By the way, the heart. This is the same problem here with Esure. They knew it. They, they've known. They've known the science of uh, implant fracture for ages. They know the science on it. They know it's bad. They know there's never been a good experience with this. And, and, and due to the location of the device in the fallopian tubes, most of the injuries that they're seeing involve, you know, there's, there's a lot of kidney damage, a lot of abdominal pain, uh, because usually when it breaks off, it'll kind of embed almost immediately wherever it can get to. Sometimes it will migrate, it will go to the brain, it will go to the heart. Mm. If you're lucky enough, it's not gonna go there and immediately kill you instead, it'll ruin a kidney, right. it'll ruin, you know, a, a, a bowel, a bladder, anything it can latch itself onto I, and bear knew it. Actually pierce the bowel, that's one of the bigger problems. Yeah. Uh, you know, let me, let me tell you a quick story. I think, this is, I think this is pretty instructional about Bear as a company generally. Uh, I've been toe to toe with Bear on several occasions. It's the same culture. It is a culture of, we wanna follow the cash cow, we're gonna make as much money as we can, we're going to leave, uh, it, it's, it's it, what I call quick profits, horrible risks. Quick profits for the company, hor horrible risks for the, for the consumer. And so I, this, this was in the Yaz case, this woman that was testifying on, her name was North. And she was like the number three kind of PR person for, the, for Bear. Her, her job was to go across the country uh, telling, uh, telling the story about how noble Bear was. Talking about the actual character of Bear, which in a civil suit, it's, it's important to know, character of either party is never at issue. You don't allow character into a discussion. If somebody robbed a bank years before, uh, yeah, maybe that comes in, but general character doesn't come in. Okay, so she testifies, Farron, and I think you've seen this. I actually put it in one of the books. The first book I wrote called Law and Disorder. It was a, a book about uh, the Yaz case and several other cases. It's a fiction, it's a fiction book, but this is a true, true part of it. Where I have her on cross-examination, I said, Mrs. North, now you've been testifying here about what a wonderful corporation this is. Their honesty, you testified about their integrity, you testified how they just do things right and they always have the consumer in mind and they would never, ba basically her, her bottom line, we would never do anything wrong, we would never hire people who do things wrong. That's the, that's the catch. So I said, well, Ms. North, have you seen this picture? And I put a picture up of uh, a fellow named Fritz Tremere. And she says, I've never seen that picture. 
Well, the picture was Fritz Tamir, who was CEO of Bear at the time, and in, 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 it actually became continued to be CEO, CEO of Bear after this incident. Fritz Tamir was a war criminal. In Auschwitz, he helped design the gas that killed hundreds of thousands of Jews in, in Auschwitz. And I said, well, uh, nobody ever told you, you're talking about the integrity of this company. Nobody ever told you about Fritz Tamir. No, I didn't know about Fritz Tamir. Well, she didn't know that I had another document. And the other document was a document that showed that every year Bayer continues to have a celebration for Sir Fritz Tremere. Literally a celebration, a gravesite celebration where they give a, a, a scholarship away to the leading scientist of a university or student in a university. And she had been there. So first of all, she's lying about Fritz Tamir. The real story about Fritz Tamir is that Bayer was so up to their eyeballs in the Nazi movement in the Second World War that they actually designed gas to kill people. And those same people who did that went to work for Bayer after the war. So I was, it was a startling moment. It was, it was a kind of moment where you go, uh, well, it was so startling that when it came up right before trial, they settled the case for all of the Yaz cases throughout the country. So this will be another opportunity to tell that story in the Assure case. Well, you know, I think there's also another part to that story, though, because if I remember correctly, and, and, and I could be wrong, so feel free to correct me, but wasn't this Yaz, because yeah, I, I was here with you, wasn't that the story that when it first came out was pitched to the New York Times, yes. and the New York Times, after kicking it around for a few months, oh, we've got this reporter, they're working on this great, great, great story, this is gonna be huge, we're gonna blow it out of the water, publication day came and they said, we can't, we, we don't wanna ruffle any feathers. That's exactly right, That's so, exactly right. It was, it's worse than that, it was actually, I was actually working um, as a contributor for MSNBC, and uh, not, you know, not regular, but I was a contributor. I would appear, you know, once every couple of weeks until I went w to work on, you know, with Ed Schultz when he had his show, I would be there sometimes two or three times a week. But I, I remember pitching this story and the producers couldn't do the story because the advertisers wouldn't let them.